So if you reach in and put something that listens in to those neurons, then you know what's happening to the muscle. And that's the goal of a brain implant. Now let's look at a time. Whoa. This company is by Elon Musk. Take a look at this line of brain interface breakthroughs over the years. Scholars have long been interested in how the brain works, so it's important to view these new developments at Neuralink as a culmination of breakthroughs by brain-machine interface okay. researchers, especially in the last few decades. Mm. For example, in 2002, the first demonstration of real-time cursor control in monkeys took place. What? 2008, a monkey controlling a robotic arm in three dimensions fed itself. 2012, the first brain-controlled robotic arm by a human. 2017, a human controlled a cursor mentally to type out words and sentences. Okay, I've heard about this, but that's pretty advanced. To, for th 2017, this was done all through your brain. That's pretty crazy. Imagine the technology that they have now. We don't even know. This. Dr. Nyojukian was part of this study, as well as the one in 2018, where a human subject mentally controlled a tablet to do things like browse the web, send emails, and play games or music. All that's been done with a couple hundred electrodes. But in 2019, Neuralink, a private company, changed the game when it unveiled a pig named Gertrude with a wireless implant that monitored about a thousand neurons. The neurons are like wiring. Um, and you kind of need an electronic thing to solve an electronic problem. That was a very interesting moment because it signaled to the community that they're serious, they're investing, they're building hardware from scratch, and they're putting it in large animals. For the pig, the electrodes were implanted in somatosensory yes. cortex, allowing them to measure sensory activity, like that of taking a step. Every time that that particular neuron they were listening to fired, you would hear this little pop or click from the audio channel. And so the moment I heard it, right, it's like, oh yeah, hold, they got neurons. You just recognize it instantly. You know what neurons sound like if you've been listening to them for decades. And that's what they were communicating, right? They, they, were, they were telling the field, we've got neurons, pay attention. And overnight, it seemed the industry took notice. Then in April of 2021, Neuralink released the so-called Mind Pong video. Pager was the name. It's a rhesus macaque, which is you know the type of monkey that is very commonly used in this field. Implanted with two of the N1 devices, the Neuralink devices, Wild. performing brain control of a cursor on a screen. That's extremely significant because here, Neuralink is showing their new hardware, their new device in their hands works in a monkey. That's the level that's necessary to convince the scientific community, to convince the FDA that you're ready to go into human clinical trials. Okay, you go that's first. the evidence the FDA is looking you for. Go first. The recording power of the N1 device in Pager was eye-opening because of the sheer number of individual electrodes that had been implanted. There was definitely a lot of clever engineering that Give went it a into shot, then. the people who introduce ideas that want people to test it should be the first ones to test it. So if you're that confident about it for humans, step right up. Until then, no testing should be done. Then it'll be a whole different story. Anyways, what are you saying, doctor? Whatever. That to build a device that can transmit 2048 electrodes worth of spiking information, right, of, of digital ones and zeros of spikes over a radio wirelessly. And when you have that many channels, the performance that you should be able to get should eclipse what we've been able to do. And I do know that the there's gonna be people that wanna volunteer, obviously. I'm obviously, you know, there's gonna be people that wanna volunteer, especially people with maybe disabilities that would prefer to have this experiment done on them to see the results. But still, you know, there's a lot of errors that they're gonna have and they know it ahead of time. And it, it is an experiment and people like these, I don't know. Field. You know, the maximum number of electrodes I've ever recorded from is two to 300. So with all those electrodes, how does a device like the N1 get implanted in a subject's brain? Make no mistake, this is neurosurgery. It is not a joke. This requires cutting the skin getting down it's not a joke so don't laugh down to skull drilling a hole in the skull exposing what's called the dura which is this protective layer of tissue that surrounds the brain cutting the dura 
folding it back to expose the brain, and then you get to the surface of the brain where you can implant the electrodes. Whoa. The biggest risks with these types of techniques are infection, bleeding, and tissue damage. So what would it take for the- Just three risks like that? The FDA to approve clinical trials in yeah, humans. The Neuralink device are called class three medical devices. They, they are implantable and they're going into very sensitive body cavities. That is the highest level of scrutiny that the FDA assigns to medical devices. They don't have a predecessor. There's no previous example that's approved. And so you know, very appropriately, they got a high bar they have to cross in order to get it approved. So what Neuralink has to do but next- FDA has it, such low things for other things. I just don't, I'm not gonna. Is prepare a very long and technical document with all the evidence from animal studies that their device is safe and effective. This document is submitted to the FDA, who has 90 days to review and give them an answer. If the FDA says yes, then their clinical trial is approved and Neuralink can enroll and recruit human participants. We're on the cusp of a complete paradigm shift. This type of technology has the potential to transform our treatments, not just for stroke and paralysis and degenerative disease, motor degenerative diseases, but also for pretty much every other type. Degenerate diseases as well. Of brain disease, from Parkinson's to epilepsy, to dementias, Alzheimer's, and even psychiatric disease. Seeing Neuralink and the other See, obviously companies- Obviously that's the good, the good side about that, the good side, but. There's a big in this space start an industry around neuroengineering brain machine interfaces neuroprosthetics has been a tremendous amount of validation for neuroscientists and engineers who've been working in this space for decades how much happier could the scientific community be than to give birth to an industry so, happy. so will this industry someday lead to the creation of cyborg humans with superhuman intelligence? Already have. There's all sorts of wild speculation in our field. I think science fiction is wonderful at telling very creative and captivating stories about all sorts of things, including, including brain machine interfaces. The reality is the, we are in such early stages of this space, right? Where we are that's just the, that's the barely... That... That's the biggest lie I believe that's always been told is that we're way behind on these things. We're not. We're not behind. What they show us able to record from neurons that control muscles. Years behind. Years. Yeah, whatever you want to say. Because what they have in, in the store and the advancement is far beyond what we can't even comprehend. This is just a small introduction to what they have already. Of course. Souls and try to interpret something, glean meaningful information out of that. We're gonna be in that space for decades. Uh, that's where I will focus much of my- That's not true. My career is understanding what's going on with these neurons and the circuits that they are working on. That's, that's it's, it, makes, it makes you, it makes people comfortable when you tell them that it's gonna take years to do this and that. Next thing you know, it's next year. And then what? You know, and then it's like you. I always, I just hope this ends, ends up in the right hands, but it's not going to. Most likely. That's just how it goes. Life is really a movie. So. This is not going to end well. Where the last 15 years of my work has been. Yeah. This is not going to end well, but, and know that they're way beyond, they're way more they advanced to the than they always say. That's part of the strategy is, I mean, this is, this has, these things have been tested on people before. It's no, it's not a, you know, it's not just getting introduced to people. It's been tested low key. They always test these things low key. Public is different. When you're open to the public, it's a whole different story. But these things have been tested, and we all know they have failed. And I mean, they might have succeeded in some cases, but I I would not trust. And this is run by Elon Musk. That's another interesting thing. Should we even trust Elon? 
Thanks for joining Quala.